we've looked at creating very basic GPS functionality, but just getting coordinates is not enough. We need to do something with those coordinates. Display a map. There was the example on W3Schools. Okay, you've got coordinates, let's display a map. But that's still not good enough to do turn-by-turn -turn navigation and all of that, which is what we want to do with our particular project. So the great thing about any sort of coding is that you're not alone. Someone probably had that question, someone probably had that problem, and then someone therefore probably has developed some form of a solution that you could adapt for your purposes. So when I set about building this class a couple of years ago, I wanted to add GPS capabilities, mapping capabilities to, to the project. And I did my research, and I found that there were a lot of people that were giving out their code, here's a possible solution, here's another solution. So I did some research and found a solution that, that works pretty well. And what we're going to do is, like we've been doing several times, we're going to start with a starting point. We're going to start with a sort of a template, and then break it down and understand how it works and change it if we need to change it. So I'm going to make available to you this starting point. It's an HTML file. It's a starting point, and we're going to use it um, to add this uh, map <coughs> capability to our project. So go over to the network drive, and if you're on a laptop, you'll have to bring me your, your USB. But go to the network drive, and I just put in a new file in there called dir.html. You want to copy that file into your project folder. The project folder that we've been working on, and the last time that we left it was on, on the 25th. So basically on your USB drive, what you want to do is get uh, my dir yeah, file, like the, last, the, project, the, uh, the one that I just finished. Are you in last week's? The, the, yeah, I can give you all of last week. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to get that dir file and put it into your project folder. Yeah, definitely the index you still keep because that runs the whole app. But the DIR file is focused on the directions. just need the DIR file or also the last time we, we worked? Oh, you already have it. Yeah. Okay. So just the DIR file. There it is. All right, so just to recap, what I'm doing here is I'm copying um, the DIR file into the project file for this week. Uh, this week. This week, we've got a date for this project. And remember, we've got the mobile website. That's what we've been working on the whole several weeks. And then inside of that folder, I'm going to put a copy of DIR. So that's what we want to be. We want to copy the DIR file over to your project. And then let's open both the index.html file and the DIR file together. You can actually select index and then control click DIR. And when they're both selected, you can right click edit with Notepad. It'll be smart enough to open them both at once. Basically, open both the index and the DIR file. Mm -hmm. The JavaScript, the JavaScript file that we've been working with today so far, you can close it. I'm also going to close that change log. So I've only got open the index HTML file and the DIR file. 
I want to see index and I want to see dir side by side. Does anyone remember that trick in Notepad to show two documents at once? You have to right click first. That's good. You have to right click on the other file and then uh, move to other view. Cascade will kind of stack them on each other. If we do move to other view, it should put them side by side. All right, so that dir file, it's a, it's a fully functional file, which I'm going to break down what it means and, and so forth. But open the dir file and then run it in Firefox. It's going to pop up. It's going to ask you share location. So yes, say share location. It's going to take a moment to try to hone in on some coordinates, perhaps. So keep waiting a moment. And then eventually it'll show you a map. Um, this is a map that you can click and drag, and you can zoom in, and also with the scroll wheel. It's a fully functional Google map, and it also has a button down at the bottom, Get Directions, and it does it. So you think, well, what's the point? It's done for us. I didn't learn anything. We will. We're going to break down what this file has, what it does, how it works, how we can change it to make it do what we want. The point of this is you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. We could do all of the research. We could become a pro in JavaScript and then read a bunch of other tutorials and try to put together a map from scratch. That might be fun. But what I want to do here is give out this project that works and then we'll break down how it works and then uh, use it how we want. Yes? There could be a number of reasons that it doesn't load up, but uh, I'm confident that it does work. Sometimes it depends on the browser. Okay, it uh, says directions, get directions, but there's, it's otherwise great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I just said. It might be your, your, uh, your, your, your particular device, your particular browser and such, but it does work. If, uh, can we show, see a show of hands? If you tried to run it and it showed a map, who saw a map? So it does work, it just might be something's going on with yours, so we won't worry about it just yet. All right, so um, let's get back into the code of Notepad to see well, what's going on. Let's go back to Notepad and let's look at your DIR file. So if we, if we go from the top to the bottom, there's the doc type of course, there's head of course, character set, bunch of stuff we've seen before. There's the style sheet, there's jQuery. Notice these are CDNs, these are online versions. We're going to deal with that in a bit, don't change anything yet. Okay, then there's a part on line 15 that says uh, Google Maps JavaScript. So this is another connection to an online resource. This is going over to google.com. This is connecting to Google's mapping system. So we have then, uh, we're connecting to the Google Maps API. You might have heard of API before. I believe it stands for Application Programming Interface. And the API just gives us access to features of the map. Yeah, we've seen that before. And basically what that is, this will make this project look a little nicer on an Apple device. Then there's a line 16, which goes down for a while to line 100. Um, and what's there is a bunch of JavaScript, which of course I'll talk about. But for the moment, let's collapse that. You might not have done this before, but do you see these minus symbols on the left side? So if you click a minus symbol, it'll collapse your code. On line 16, click the minus symbol to collapse that whole script section. It didn't delete your code, of course. It just hid it for a moment, like closing a drawer. I'm collapsing it for a moment to focus on other parts, then we'll get back to it. Reading further, the end of head, and then body begins. And then we should see div, data role page, map ID, div, data role header, 
H1. So this, this should look familiar, although it's using the old divs rather than the newer semantic HTML5, which we'll need to fix. Data roll content, okay. There's no footer. In the content, there's another div, class UI bar A, UI corner all, UI shadow. This is a placeholder that will display the map. So if you don't have any map, you'll just get a gray box. That's what that is displaying. With a certain height that was hard coded in, I might not want to hard code it, but what I, what I mean by that is that there's, an, there's a value of 350 pixels, a hard value instead of percentages or M's or other flexible values, and it's also inline CSS, which I might not want either. Uh, that's got also an ID. There's something that says div data role field contain. We haven't looked at this before. But then there's something that says label. There's something that says target destination. And then something that says input. And at the very end of that line, line uh, 114, it has the address of one of our campuses. But I don't see that at all when we run it, do we? We don't see anything about a target destination, it just did it. So what's happening here also is this is hidden. Line 113 says style display none. This is a way to hide stuff on screen via CSS. So there's something hidden happening. Again, I'll explain more in detail, but just we're looking at in general. Something called directions button. This is a link Directions button, data roll button. Oh, that's the button that I see on screen that says get directions. Okay. After that, there's a div, another placeholder div that is also invisible. There's another placeholder div called results, invisible, and another div inside of that called directions. So on screen, let me load it up again. Let me refresh it. When this first loads up, it asks for directions, and I'll say yes. And this is what my screen looks like. I've got the empty placeholder, which is line uh, 109. I did uh, approve the location, so then it showed a map. I've got my header. I've got a button that says Get Directions. And when I click Directions, it makes a map, and then it displays directions. This stuff gets displayed in this placeholder div. Results. How did it know to go to 4343 Ocean View Boulevard? Well, that's the other hidden line, 114, value equals. Let's play with this. Let's say, let's put your home address or some other address on line 114, where it says value equals, quote, end quote, remove that and put something else, maybe your home address, some other kind of address. So I'm going to put in It's pretty smart that you can write it like a regular kind of address. You don't really have to worry about commas or whatever, although it should work with a comma, right? We often have a comma after the city. Save it and run it. It should still show you your current destination, your current location. Perhaps. And then when you click Get Directions, now it should show you a map that goes to whatever you told it as a destination. There we go. It's going over here to East Lake a different place than the original location. So this is how we set the destination location. Okay, what if we do this? Line 113 and 114 both have a spot that says style equals display none. Change on line 113, display colon block, B-L-O-C-K, and then also on the following line at the end, it says display 
none, change that also to display colon block right here line 114 display after the address display block save it and run it what's the difference Line 113 and 114. <coughs> okay, I'm going to refresh it. Share location. Oh, look at that. It shows on screen the words target destination and a block, a little space for you to actually write something here dynamically. Get directions. And there's a map to West Virginia. Question here? Yes, I'm not, I'm not getting the field. Check that out. I get target destination question. Yeah, it's a robot. Anyone else? Did you get it? Did you get that those boxes? Okay, everyone. I think it's a little noisy. If you're going to help your neighbors, can you please quiet down just a little bit? You're distracting the class. So, um, at this point, if this worked, uh, we have a little box for someone to dynamically at their leisure put in a target destination. This doesn't make sense for our app though. Why would a person want to put in any random destination? My theory here is that my app is gonna let people come to this college. So that's why it's hidden. We just hard-coded a value about where you end up and the person gives their uh, location via approving the GPS coordinates, right? So that's why that's hidden there, and what's happening is that line is taking the, the destination and having us, uh, giving us directions. Um, so if we were doing this for your company's app, this is how we would then set it up, how to get to our store on Main Street. We've got a spot here where you can change the location. If we wanted to change other minor aspects, um, you know, if the text that appears on top here, or the, uh, or the instead of get directions, making it say something else, we unfortunately don't have a very easy way for it to change for that stuff there to change, because that's coming from the Google servers. When we request the, the map, Google then gives us the data and displays it. If you want to change that, that's a little more complicated. I wouldn't really want to. It's pretty detailed information. Like here, it's telling me this, this location here is uh, 2,000 miles away. It's going to take me one day and nine hours to get there. Uh, and then this is a live map. But what else is happening here? It can't just simply be working that I put in a destination and it works. Well, now this is when we're going to back up to that line that we, that we hid or that we collapsed. Go back to line 16 and click plus to open the code and it'll expand and let's break down what's happening there. <coughs> let's actually jump down to the end of the script and we'll kind of work backwards a little bit. So line... Let's look at line uh, 91. On line 91, we've got some jQuery happening here. Dollar symbol. That's a keyword. That's just shorthand for jQuery. Question? Yeah. So the dollar symbol right there is jQuery shorthand. Where we previously had, for example, document.getElementById we could use 
jQuery to compress that. So basically, we've got a uh, we've got some JavaScript, some jQuery, and we've got document dot live. So this is saying this current document once it is live, once it's loaded, once it's on screen, do something specifically before the page can. Uh, finishes showing. We have different triggers. We'll see some of these triggers in a moment. One of these triggers is before the page shows, um, there should be an element or an object on screen called ID map. Right? Line 104 says there's a div with an ID of map. Um, once that div once the page is live and before that shows on screen, run this function. This should look familiar. Navigator dot geolocation dot get current position. So it's trying to get the GPS coordinates, just like we did a, a little while ago. We have location success, location error, kind of what we were talking about. Again, W three schools had a certain keyword there. This one has location success, loc success. Doesn't matter the names because these are functions that we invent ourselves. So if you see loc success, double click it just to select it. And if you then scroll back in the code somewhere, it'll also highlight right there, line 54. So okay, what does loc success mean or what does it do? Function loc success takes the data of a successful capture of the GPS coordinates and it says run the function initialize and use the latitude and longitude. What does initialize mean? If you double click initialize and you back up, you will see somewhere initialize means right here, line 22. Initialize takes latitude and longitude coordinates, which we are supplying right here the latitude and longitude that we got from the successful location. Okay, so it's taking latitude and longitude. And then it's using a variable, direction display, a variable that was created back here on the previous lines. We, create, we actually created four variables, a variable called map, current position, direction display, and direction service. We created them, but they are not, they don't contain anything. Line 23 then is saying, okay, let's fill direction display with a new Google Map Directions Renderer object. What is that? That's something that's coming from the Google Map JavaScript. The hidden the hidden Google JavaScript code that helps create a, a map. The code that they invented that they're letting us use. That's an API basically. Tapping into code that someone made available for us to use to do something. So we're creating a new directions renderer, whatever that means, and we're then creating a new direction service, and we're saving that inside of these variables. We're then filling current position with a new latitude and longitude uh, object that we're getting from Google Maps again, based on the latitude and longitude that our app asked us for. Then we're taking a map and creating a new Google map. And this has a bunch of then details as well, such as what zoom level. Maybe if I change that to different numbers, I'll get a different kind of map. I will. This lets me zoom in, zoom out. Notice also line uh, 31, if you break it down at the end. I want to see a road map. Well, can I see maybe a satellite map? Can I see a bike map? I can. How do I know what, what goes there? I would need to go back to the Google documentation, the Google Maps documentation, and it'll tell me a list of all possible values. Again, this is why I'm giving you this completed. Because it works, we can understand how it works enough for it to do what we want. We don't need to write all of this step by step because then we'd have to educate ourselves in the complete Google API first. Here we're just using it. We have another value called center, which is based on our current position, which was designed, which was defined back here. Direction display, that one, I forget exactly what it does. 
but um, it then sets a map based on other um, values. Okay, another variable, current position marker. And then this is a new Google map marker, that little pin that drops in the map. Its position is based on the current position of GPS. It's using the map that was defined up here. And then the text that appears on screen is current position. Well, what happens if we change that to say, you are here? It would say, you are here. So we can change some of these things um, to suit our, our needs. Continuing, we've got info, window, oh, I see here, current position, latitude. Uh, I just saw that a moment ago right here. Current position, latitude. If we want that to change, There's a spot there where that can be changed. If you wanted to say something else, you are here, latitude, longitude, that's where we would change it. Maybe not that one. I think that displays in a different place. It wasn't visual, it didn't change, but this one uh, looks like it would change. Uh, and if you click on it, it'll show the current position marker. All right, so that was all of what initialize did. So this is what initialize does. It basically displays the map. If we were able to get a position success, if the GPS did work, backing up, um, because we've got location success, we've also got location error. If I double-click location error on line 92, it tells me location error is defined right here. If there's an error, if whatever GPS didn't work, it'll then just default to that location, which is somewhere in downtown San Diego. So even if the person's GPS is not working, it should display at least a basic map starting from downtown San Diego. A person could then possibly orient themselves to get on the road at least that way. If I wanted it to happen in a different starting point, well, I need to look up latitude and longitude coordinates, add them to the initialize, and then we can get a starting point there if, if, um, if we don't have a, a positive result. Okay, so all of that happens basically as soon as the page loads. We see that when we run it, the first thing that it asks for is share location. Let's look at this. Uh, we've seen that Google Chrome isn't showing the, isn't the GPS for Google Chrome isn't working. Um, the GPS for, for Firefox, I'm going to compare the two right here. Notice uh, for Firefox, it's giving me this, this location, uh, and then for Chrome, it's giving me the default location. I didn't give it, the GPS didn't work on Chrome, so it gave me a spot right there. It seems to be by the Santa Fe uh, train depot. Uh, this one gave me a location, and that's based on actually because the main the main backbone of the internet connection of this campus eventually goes back to the to the to city college down over there in in uh, downtown San Diego so Firefox is getting that location from the main data center for the for the college for city college and that's why I have a location there I was not getting a location from Google Chrome notice the little the little failure notice right there but at least now both of them I can do get directions 
and they will both give me directions to wherever I told it to. When I clicked that get directions, that's happening on line 95. Again, this is sort of saying like, pay attention to the document. Pay attention to the web page. Pay attention to the app, basically. And it's saying, on a certain trigger, do something. We saw up here that when the trigger is that the page goes live, do something. We, we're seeing here that when there is a click on the document, specifically when we click on the object on screen with an ID of directions button, which is right here, line 116. There's our button. It has an ID directions button. This JavaScript up here is waiting. This is, this is an event, an event handler. It's waiting for an event then it can handle it. An event handler. It's waiting for something. It's paying attention to the document. On the event that there is a click, specifically the, did, the button that has that ID, do the following function. Uh, first it says prevent default, which is just something we might do sometimes because the default of clicking a link is to follow the href. Well, we're, we're not going to follow the href. We're not going anywhere. So here it's basically prevent that default. Don't follow that link. Instead, run the function calculate route. What does calculate route mean? If I select that and back up, we'll see. Line 58 defines what that means. And a bunch of stuff happens here about checking our current position, checking the ending position. This is like, first of all, um, variable target destination. There should be some object on the screen called target dest, which there is, which is right here. Target dest. The value, which is the address. Right here. The value of the address that someone typed gets saved in that variable, target destination. Yes? Could there be anything about it's written value for below and the VAL at the top? There's so many ways to accomplish the same thing. This is using a, a method called val which for this particular case just seems to work. Sometimes we might see it that it's value, like that. With this particular code, it may not work. So I, we just sort of have to trust that in this case, this was the best way to do it. In other, way, other cases, the better way might be to actually spell out value, because we see value down on the bottom. So we're getting the value of whatever's in that box, we're storing it in target destination. Then we've got this if statement. Again, we'll get into if statements more later, but this is just checking. Is this basically true or false? It's checking. Do we have a current position? Is a current position defined? Current position is defined because we said yes. Take my location. Double and means and do we have a current position that is not empty? Because we might have a current position, but for whatever reason, the GPS gives me a, an empty location. Not, this means not. And do we have a target destination? Target destination would be that someone writes something in that box, or actually that it has a value filled in. We're not going to let people write something in, we just want a value, uh, hard-coded. So, and that that target destination is not blank. If all of that, if all of those conditions are met, then we'll do the following if. I'm going to skip down. Else. Hide. If we do have a target destination and a starting destination, then we'll do some calculations. 
or else if we don't have any of that, just don't display any results. There's no results to display, so we have dot hide. That's some jQuery right there to hide that placeholder. So if we do have starting and ending points, then some other stuff happens, something called request, then it's going to store current position, target position. It's going to give us a driving type of map, because we could get a map that gives us walking directions, we can get one that's biking directions, we can get one that's bus directions. How do I know that? Again, we would look that up in the Google Maps API documentation for what possible values to include here. Direction service route, and that again just goes on to check, is there a map? Do we have a value in directions? Uh, there's a little hidden thing that we'll deactivate in a moment, or reactivate. If all of that worked, if we do have a starting point, we do have an ending point, we do have a map, then show the results. Show the line by line how to get there. There could be other things that mess up. That's why there's also another else here. Don't show the results. It's not working. So all of this was already written for us. All of this works. Um, again, you, sometimes you just want something that works and you adapt it to your needs. That's what we've done here. This particular um, Google Map uh, project is not the only way to do it. There's many, many, many other ways to do it. Not One is not better than another. This fulfills what we need to do, so it's the good solution for us. There may be other solutions that that maybe give you more results or different um, options and so forth, and that might be fine. For example, there's something that's hidden here, deactivated. Remember the slash asterisk, asterisk slash means deactivate. There's something happening here. I won't explain what this does just yet. Let's uncomment this. Line 72 to 77 is commented, so take out those slash asterisk and asterisk slash save it and run it, see what happens differently. So I'm going to remove on line 72 the comment, and I'm going to remove on line 77 the comment. Now I've made that other little block of code active. Let's save it and run it. The result should be okay. That works the same as before. There's a destination. Once this loads up, I will select directions. And what pops up is something that says head north on front toward West Hawthorne. Okay. Turn left at the first cross street onto Wharton. Okay. Continue straight to stay on Wharton. So what it's doing is it's displaying on a pop-up box turn-by-turn turn directions. It's also trying to display it with some HTML, and HTML doesn't work in a pop-up box. So uh, we could make that display in a different kind of way with jQuery Mobile and so forth. That's why it's deactivated. It, it works, but it's not as pretty as it could work. So we could have turn-by-turn turn directions here. That's what this is all saying. So it's saying create another variable. Response.route zero leg like zero. This is something called an array. We haven't talked about that. But uh, it's just going to be there's a list of instructions how to get there, right? One through ten. The very, very first item in that list of instruction internally, it's the zero width item. We're gonna learn later that when we start to count, we're gonna start counting with zero. Zero is often what we start counting with, not with one. So we're starting with the zeroth item. And we're then going to step basically from the from the first from the first instruction to the last instruction, whatever it may be. And it's going to display on screen alert. It's going to show you what the current step is. It's instruction. Step by step by step. This is a for statement. We haven't talked about that either, but it's just going to display an alert box step by step by step. 
Now that I know about it, I'm going to hide it again because it's a little annoying. We'll make it work a little better later. We'll go back to our code and we'll change a couple of things back. As I said, for our purposes it doesn't make sense that we allow people to um, choose a destination. Our, the goal of this is that people will come to us. So let's go back to hide a couple of things here. Line 113, this is the, the, the little bit of text that says target destination. So back to line 113 and set display none. N-O-N-E line 113. Line 114 at the end also has a line that we should change to display none. <coughs> line 114, none. And you can leave whatever address you wrote here or I'm going to put back the address I previously had, which is this one right here. 4343 Ocean View Boulevard, San Diego, California, 92113. 4343 Ocean View Boulevard, San Diego, California, 92113. Put that back in the value of line 114. I have a quick question. Yes. I noticed they're not using like any um, comments to set out, set off without me. It doesn't matter, actually. I'm going to put it in, and it should still work just fine. Uh, it seems to be pretty smart enough to, to take in the, the input, so just to confirm it. Uh, yeah, special thing, um, like validation, how they validate that. Yeah, that validation, see, it, it worked. That validation is happening at Google servers. So somewhere inside of that line of code that says, you know, Google Maps, API, whatever, JavaScript, all of that is the validations happening in there. We never see how it worked, it just works. Yeah, a relatively correct address and it'll then accept it. Um, so, uh, the, the point is that I'm just trying to get back to kind of what it was before we uh, made a bunch of changes. Uh, we've taken some time to kind of explore what what we got. I gave you this black box. It just works. Maybe after my explanation you're even more confused. That's okay. The thing again is that it works. You, you've you looked at it. You perhaps get some ideas of, of maybe somehow a little bit about what works. Definitely what you should understand is line 92 at least. Line 92 is the part that's that's capturing the coordinates. We, we did that together last hour then to make it work like a real map there's much more code so everything that you do on all of your apps there's hundreds of lines if not thousands if not millions of lines of code to make everything that an app does to work that's why when you take this class even after three months honestly you're not going to be a pro at this there's still going to be a lot for you to learn even if you've had experience before in other classes and take this class in three months there's still more to learn um, and you don't need to code everything always from scratch. You can start with templates and starting points and libraries and things. Like I'm and one of my fun apps that I'm working on the side. I'm I'm trying to do a uh, just for fun. I'm trying to do a a gas 
mileage calculator, you know, miles per gallon calculator. There's plenty of apps that already do that, but for fun, for me, that's what I do on my spare time. I'm just, you know, playing with JavaScript and code and apps, and I'm making my own little mileage tracker from scratch. So then I wanted to display the numbers of, uh, if someone puts in the values that you paid $75, that you paid $36.20 for a fill-up, I wanted to display nicely with a dollar symbol with the two digits of the dollars and the two digits of the cents because by default it's going to want to display without the dollar symbol two digits for the dollars and then one digit for the cents if i've got 10 cents it would display it as 38.1 i want 38.10 so i found a little bit of javascript one simple little library that someone put out there free that takes in the ugly value and displays it as the nice value. I don't want to spend my time coding that. Someone did it. I've got other things I want to code. Same thing here. We've got a plenty to do in this project. I don't want to talk about step by step. Let's create a variable. Let's create this function. Let's do an if statement. I explained it in general. Some of you may understand it more. If you've got more experience, great. Hack it and make it do something else. For most of us, this will be enough of what we want to do for our project. And I got this if you look at the very last line, there's a link there. We'll look at this, then we'll take a break. There's a link here. If you follow that link, I think you can double-click it. Yeah, if you double-click it, it then opens up to this amazing website called stackoverflow.com, part of the Stack Exchange Network. Stackoverflow.com is a website where people ask questions on a variety of topics, like programming, app development, WordPress development, English language, bunch of topics. Um, people ask questions and people give answers. People lend their expertise to, um, to the questions. So there was a question. Clean example of directions with Google Map and jQuery Mobile. Poorly worded question, but there was a question. And then there were results. People then vote on the results. You might have heard of Reddit. This is similar to that, kind of. People vote on a result that works well, like that one, 37 votes. People say, this is a good result. This is a good answer. Other people give different results, which may or may not be better, but, um, but this one, uh, I, I got the, res I got the th what we're working on, I basically got one of their answers from here. with some modification. Um, seems to be... yeah, the second update. The below example uses the current position which is automatically located in a target destination which is given with the user. Here's another example for some other thing. So this that we're using, I got it from here. You know, that's not cheating. That's starting with a starting point and then defining it uh, using it for us. For example, this was using jQuery Mobile 1.2 and jQuery 1.8 and so forth. So Stack Exchange is a great place to go and ask questions. You've got at the top search. And then also it's got related questions such as geolocation possible but inactive. Maybe you're having that problem. You think you wrote all the code, but it's not quite working. Here's another question that was asked, and then here's the, here's the results that people said, try this. So there's questions, there's answers. This is Stack, Exchange, uh, Stack Overflow. It's specifically about coding and programming. But if you, if you go to the site stackexchange.com, the main uh, location, Stack Exchange, uh, all sites, so there's uh, all about coding, there's about servers, there's about arcade programming and such, mathematics, Ubuntu, Linux, uh, Mac, questions, 
theoretical computer science, role-playing games, science fiction and fantasy. Let's let's look at that. Where were there any spacefaring Ewoks? Okay, so someone did the research and answered that question. I'm curious. Yes, X-Wing book series had a biologically enhanced Ewok, Kolot, who flew with the Wraith Squadron. Okay, so lots of answers. Nine pluses on that. Uh, so, and then here's a list of many more Jedi, uh, many more Ewoks that flew ships. Tarfang and Treek. So, lots of, lots of these stack exchanges for you to get information like on mathematics, chemistry, network engineering. It's on stackexchange.com and then you can go to all sites. So this is uh, one of the many places, or one of the main places actually, where when I'm having trouble with some JavaScript or whatever, I go and search around here. Most likely someone had the question, and that'll lead me to a solution. It's happened a lot of times. So you're not alone. Even though you, know, you take this class and you move on, and you want to keep working on apps, this is a place for you to continue to, to, to learn about this stuff. Ask questions. Uh, we're going to take one more break, and then what we're going to do is, okay, I gave you the DIR HTML, but it's not really part of our project yet. It hasn't been linked. There are other factors we need to take care of. We need to address, okay, are we going to copy and paste this code into our SPA? Other factors. So, let's take one more break. It's 8, um, 19, 8.20. Let's be back at 8.30, and we'll incorporate the directions project file into our main project.